I know you're from the East Coast. Long before you um, went out to Hollywood, become this big wig, you're in, you grow up in Pennsylvania. Do I have that correct? Yeah, yeah, Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia, okay. Are you a fan of hip hop? Where, where does Big and Pac even fall into your life? Were you listening to their music first before you ever went to film school, before you ever got involved with this project? Is it personal for you in any way? A, a, a thousand percent personal. Um, so it's funny, actually, because I was asked this question and, and probably should have given the answer I'm going to give you earlier today, but it was six in the morning when I did the interview. Uh, this probably started for me, my, my, my pops listened to a ton of Motown and uh, a ton of music and black culture, but really for me, hip hop, rap, um, and then soon thereafter R&B came from my cousin, Michael. He was a DJ on Power 99 and uh, he was a very, he was 19 years old. They put him in the midnight slot um, and he was What do you getting, go by? What's his DJ name? Uh, Mike Fresh. Mike so, Fresh. Uh, and uh, so he was, he was doing that. He, it was like a, basically he had started as an intern, worked his way through the ranks. Uh, he was DJing parties. He was like rapping, scratching, doing everything of that ear and time. And then they gave him that slot on Power 99. And um, he was my hero. He was everything to me. He passed away when I was 19, a few years thereafter. Um, but when I was very young, I would say fifth, sixth grade, he gave me the UTFO tape. Um, you know, he gave me uh, LL. Uh, he, he was giving me, thing, you know, Bobby Brown. I was getting access to things from him. And then also uh, he worked with this cat, Gene. And they used to, I don't, you know, they DJed parties together everywhere. But a lot of times they would go into the hood and, you know, him and Gene would do their thing. And, you know, for whatever reason, they'd be like, you know, come and I'd carry the records, the crates, and I would just kick it and spend time at the parties and just be there as the kid behind the DJ table. So I just spent and had an experience early, early on that was like deeply impactful and influential on my life through my cousin. I mean, my love for Bob Marley, all of these things uh, came from him because I was really in awe of him. And they, you know, I mean, man, so like, and then, then actually from a filmmaking, just connecting the dots perspective, it, because I got into basketball, that became an extension because all, mostly everybody I was playing with was, was brothers. So they were listening to all the music and I fit in because I understood the music from the perspective of being a fan and was able to connect with these kids beyond the basketball court. And then there was a level of respect because I could play. So there was a lot of mutuality that was experienced through my friendships and it wasn't really about race. It was just about us as kids and human beings hanging out with common things and things that we all loved and that we were a part of. Um, so that was an interesting thing. What I was about to say was I watched Do the Right Thing and I had always been a fan of movies. But I watched Do the Right Thing, and there's that very famous scene in the pizza parlor with John Turturro and Spike Lee playing Mookie. And basically, Mookie's given Turturro, you know, some shit because he's, he's saying to him, like, you know, all, you know, you're fans of the greatest people. Who are they? And he starts naming all these Black artists from yep. Prince and, you know, so on and so forth. And Mookie's telling them, you know, they're Black. And... It was using the N-word, which I don't ever use. And um, I'm very sensitive to that. And uh, he's saying, no, no, they're not. And they get into this crazy exchange because he's basically showing you and representing in that film and that little anecdote the depth of impact that these great athletes and entertainers have had on the world, regardless of your race. And I, I was the first movie that I had ever seen that was like almost like a documentary to me in the sense of that it spoke to things in my life and it spoke to relationships I had. I mean, like if like I would sit and like scrub my shoes, you know, like trying to get my first pair of <laughs> Air, Air Jordans. When Air Jordan, when, when MJ came out, they didn't even have Air Jordans for my age. You had to get a Sky Jordan. And I remember going to my pops, I was like, look, 
I got to get this guy Jordan. I remember it was a hundred dollars. And my dad was like, I'm not spending a hundred dollars on a pair of sneakers. I, he would tell me, sir, I would wear, he goes, I wore Converse when I was a kid. They were like five bucks. He's like, I'm not getting. And it was like, I was relentless. You know, I mean, little things that were like a part of my life were all in this movie. And that's what changed my perspective on filmmaking, storytelling. That's what inspired me to be a part of trying to do something in my life that I, um, you know, genuinely wanted to leave a, like some type of mark with my time here in a sense, because my cousin couldn't do that because he passed away. Um, also, I saw how hard my parents worked. My, my mom from, you know, much more impoverished background, my dad from, you know, middle upper class. But from both of them, I, I, I learned a great work ethic. I learned a great work ethic through basketball. But I also was like, I don't want to put all this time into a work if I don't love what I do. And since I couldn't get, since I wasn't gonna ever really get paid to pay, play, you know, get good money playing basketball and I wasn't gonna be an R&B singer, you know, the truth of the matter is, is like film seemed like the next best option. It really was one of my loves, but not necessarily my first love. Um, really? I think if I could have been like Casey or Jojo and Jodeci, I was in, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like. Those guys, like Juan Ye and Boys to Men, like those guys, those crooners, those guys who could sing like that captivated me. I was always, always blown away by them. So that's that's a bit of my story of like where it began. Pac was introduced to me. I uh, had Rolling Stone magazine. I was at Emory freshman year. Um, I transferred later to NYU the year after I went for basketball. And I had the Rolling Stone open and there was like a inch and a half picture of Pac and his bandana tied backwards. And I can't tell you the what, the when or the why, but I was like, that's the coolest dude I've ever seen. There was something about him that like jumped off uh, the, that, that page to me. I, I, I became obsessed with Pac. I was researching Afeni, the Black Panthers, how he was raised from Baltimore to the West Coast to, you know, his mother being, you know, pregnant um, with him when he was in prison. Uh, well, she was in prison and she was pregnant with him. And, and, and anything I get my hands on, uh, you know, I made my first short film at school. I put holler if you hear me in the track. And, you know, I, I just I just was obsessed. And then Biggie came to me because I was, best thing I ever did was transfer from Emory uh, in Atlanta to New York because the rise of the hip hop in the nineties was one of the coolest things that I, that I had ever seen, been a part of witnessed. And there was a moving party, um, where there was the coop that we would go to off of uh, third Ave near the Bowery. Um, there was, you know, the, um, uh, blow pop was that moving party. Um, and I don't know why Big got up on stage. I didn't know who he was, but I had never seen anybody captivate an audience, move a crowd, do the things that he was doing. Yeah. And I, I was, I was like, ins I was just blown away. And that was my first introduction to seeing Christopher and was obsessed ever since. So all of these things led me, as you can see. So I tried in making this movie, you know, um, as a fan. And, and that's why City of Lies represents so much more to me than a movie because it's so much bigger than me. You know, I wanted to make a movie for the fans. I wanted to make a movie that fought for justice and truth for Miss Wallace, Wayne, their family and friends, same thing for Pac, extended beyond that. So, um, you know, these were things that, that weighed on me and uh, it, it's been a long road to say the least. And that's a long story. So thanks for your patience. <laughs> no, nah, great answer. Though. Great answer. Uh, and I was about to ask you my next question, but I think you answered it for me. I, I was going to put you on the spot, like bigger pot. Like, but it sounds like it was, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I know the answer to that. You no, know, no, nah, it, it's, it, you know, they're so different, you know. I, I, it, it, Come on, it, Brad. You're not a politician. No, no. I, I, I'm. I, they're so, so different, man. I, I'm, I'm a fan of both, mutually and equally. I, I, honest to God, I'm telling you my truth. I really am. <laughs> they, they both moved my universe in different ways, man. They really did. And they, they, you know, they're so different. Like you know, when I say that, you know what I mean. They're no, just, I do. I do. I mean, Pac, Pac has a poetry book, you know. I mean, and 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 it's. But Biggie's impact on culture and and it's just 
I mean, and, and the way that he made you feel and brightened up your day and like Pac made you think and it, these things are melded together in a way that just the way they challenge you as individuals differently. It's just, they really are, are equally meaningful. I'm gonna go with big since I'm wearing my big sweatshirt. There we go, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna let no, you I, lo I, I love both of them. I said, I'm gonna let you off the hook with that one, but I'm glad you got your big shirt on. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.